Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Friday, March the 19th, and it's 4.15 p.m. And I'm bringing you uh, a, the prophecy newsletter, um, or prophecy letter from Dawn. Some, uh, most of these, I think, are very good. This first one is really important if if it pertains to you it's from small straws in a soft wind by marcia burns i will cause you to search the height and depth of your own soul and spirit to see what you really believe and to reveal the places in you that are not aligned with the truth of my word and will this is a prime opportunity to make adjustments before you forge ahead. Do not be afraid to be honest in your self-examination. It is the way to spiritual freedom. So, um, listen to that again if you didn't get it. Because it's, it's, I had to read it a few times myself, but maybe that's just me. The scripture put with it is John 8, 31 and 32. Then Jesus said to those who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Okay, this one is from a person uh, that submitted, uh, I guess they submit these to Dawn's newsletter. Uh, it's called Fireballs and the Rapture, and it was given to Elizabeth Marie. On June 27th, 2019, I received this message from the Lord. Keep pressing through. Become overcomers. The lateness of the time is upon you. Can you not feel and perceive this to be so? And yet many do nothing continue in their old ways and their old routines. Soon these will be shaken up by what is coming and you will be forced to reevaluate your very life. Wow, isn't that something? The first message talked about evaluating yourself. Self, do not be afraid to be honest in your self-examination. Come down here, Elizabeth Marie Gitz in 2019. Can you not feel and perceive this to be so, and yet many do nothing but continue in their old ways and their old routines? Soon these will be shaken up by what is coming, and you will be forced to reevaluate your very life. I find that amazing. It's not a coincidence. Okay, next paragraph. I have called out for repentance. I have given warnings through my messengers and through my word. Now all will unfold just as was predicted. Okay, pause. You see, this is why we need the Word of God, but we also need to be paying attention to the rhema words, the words given to the messengers. You have to have Holy Spirit discernment and wisdom, and you need to know the Word to discern what messages to believe or at least hold on to in the back of your mind and the others to 
say, uh, not so sure about that one. You see, if you throw them all out because they don't agree with your opinion, you may be missing out on something really big really soon. All right. So now all will unfold just as was predicted. I wonder if I shouldn't say prophesied. Anyway, I suppose the Lord could use the word predicted. There are things that were predicted, not through prophecy. So I'll move on. There will be a main event that will have a domino effect. Once this happens, quickly get yourselves ready for the dam of disasters will break loose. These are part of my wake-up judgments that I will allow. However, please know that when the fireballs start to fall, my people will be coming up to greet me. Coming up going up at first I read this and I'm like so you're coming down to earth and we're going to walk up to you and greet you I mean I was like I don't think so I almost deleted this I'm glad I read it again it means really going up in a flash in the twinkling of an eye we'll be going up to greet Jesus See, he's not coming down here yet just like in the days of Lot, until then, remain true, humble, and contrite towards me. Humble and contrite. I see all, I know all, and I act accordingly. We are so much closer to all of this coming to pass. Look up. For I come soon, your beloved groom, Yahushua, Jesus. Then I heard, the time is getting late. Do not be sleeping virgins and wait till the last minute to get prepared. Trim your lamps now. All right, Genesis 19 24 through 25 says then the lord rained brimstone and fire on sodom and gomorrah from the lord out of the heavens so he overthrew those cities all the plain all the inhabitants of the cities and what grew on the ground matthew 25 10 to 13 this is the parable of the ten virgins. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Well, in this, when uh, we were studying this on Team Jesus, Kathy found an Aramaic Bible online, and the Aramaic, word for that word bridegroom was bride and groom the bride was already gone and was had come back with the groom to get those who were ready the multitude too large to number he just used 10 as a as his first parable and the rest the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. See, this is not where he says, I never knew you. He knew them. Why, why did it end up saying, I do not know you? They were dressed and ready they they were just like the other virgins they loved jesus they wanted to go in 
to the wedding supper, but he doesn't know them now. Why? Because they have Nephilim blood in them. How'd that happen? You all know. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Oh my. Revelation 3.12 He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. Remember, that happens at the end of the thousand-year reign of Christ and the kings and priests that reign with him. All right. This next one, I I don't get it. I'm, I'm skipping that one. All right, this next one, um, yeah, I, I can get it. All right, March 17th. Did I tell you these were from March 17th? Um, yeah, it came from March 17th, and so it's just two days old. All right, so this one starts off with, shh. Be quiet, be silent, listen. Sometimes it is best to keep your mouth shut. Too often, Christians get into trouble because they speak up and out about matters they have no business discussing. I'm thinking maybe politics? Other things? Quite often, you should keep your mouth shut regarding subjects you know little about. People, time and again, get into trouble and lead others astray down the wrong path because they don't know what they are talking about. Seriously, hear me. Matthew 18, 6, New King James Version. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believes in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. I can think of several things people ought to stop saying. March 17, 2021. Let experience be your teacher. A good parent allows their child to make choices after teaching them the right way. I do this as well. I will never control or manipulate you. I want you to learn from your experiences and mistakes. Boy, howdy, he sure does. Tests and trials are for your benefit because it proves your belief. When you experience something hard, learn the lesson and rise to another level of belief. This will bring wholeness and completeness in your life. Uh, the verse given with that is James 1, 2 through 4. Consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. Boy, it doesn't feel like a gift at the time, does it? You know that under pressure, your belief life is forced into the open. How about your faith? And shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you will become mature and well-developed. 
not deficient in any way. That's a strange translation. And uh, she doesn't say what Bible that's from. And that was given to Robin Robinson Bowling. Okay, that's the end of that. So I'll plead the blood of Jesus over this video, over each and every one of us, our devices, and our internet connections. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.